Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, so this is the third video I've filmed in a matter of a couple hours. So I'm sort of just continuing on and you've probably either seen them day after day or there's been a bit of Roxy Creations journal of stitchery peppered in amongst it. So I'm just on a bit of a roll here. So I thought I'll just keep going. And in the last video, you would have seen that my beads went flying and I had to get on my hands and knees and pick them all up. Job done, lid on, all secure. I bet it made you giggle. I think we've all done it. We've all flicked our beads across. So what did I do after I turned the camera off? I, I got these little tea card images and I glued them to my coffee dyed paper cut them out so they're ready just to start sliding in. I also went and printed all of the uh, My Porch Print ephemera pieces that I can sprinkle through all these journals. So at the end of this video, I'll go through those. I need to make sure I leave about, you know, 10 minutes to show you those. So, and they'll sort of come back through and slide in everywhere. Um, I do wanna do something here. I'll come back to that because nothing's inspiring me. Uh, off camera, I cut those pieces of map card. I was going to sew and that's sort of where I stopped the video, but I decided not to because it's already stitched. And I thought if I put zigzag there, it looks too much. If I put the floral one, it didn't seem right either. So I went looking for some um, sentiments and I've got these little ones here I can't tell you where they're from and who I wish I could it's um, just some general sentences that have been done on an old typewriter and um, I've just printed them onto coffee stain and when I say coffee stained I don't coffee stain I do Parisian essence it's just that word keeps coming out of my mouth, but it's not actually coffee stain. Ah, oh, here we go. Junk. Junk with Steph. Junk with Steph. I think she's a Queensland girl, actually. I need to find her and link her as well, because she has some interesting little elements. So, Junk with Steph. Now this is another one where she's used a typewriter and written little elements that you can sort of cut up and add to your journals. So if you own an old typewriter, dig it out. I do, but I can't get the ribbon for it anymore. So that's the end of that idea for me. Now on this second pocket, I cut out a little bit of that um, edging from that big tablecloth, circular tablecloth. Pop it there. I found also, remember I was saying in a previous video that I couldn't find my little bag full of these little elements. They're um, from um, Tracy from the I Love Junk Journals. And also found a couple more of my little ephemera holders that are uh, really just stuffed full of bits and pieces to add to journals. Sort of, it's like my little go-to pack without having the big books on my table so now where am I at that's that's another comment I'm going to make I invested in these folders now they're made by an Australian lady Bella Gray and they hold heaps okay but they're big and in the pockets Bella I'm not sure if her first name is Bella she had these little ones and I tend to find I'm using them more than the big ones. And I think it's because if I had a heap of these, I could have them um, stuffed full of elements for a particular project. And then if this project gets put away because you go on to something else briefly, the bits are with it and you're not having to go through the big folders, which just take up space on your desk. So I'm starting to think this is the trick to it. Now, if you've watched my series that was rolling through July, which was the Junk Journal July prompts from Meg's journals, I did a whole Japanese theme. And in there, I made a couple of those little ephemera holders to go with my Japanese pack. I'm not sure what episode. Hold the phone. I'm just grabbing the container 
because it was a journal that was yet to be completed to go on a holiday. So what I did in that series is I went through and made a heap of elements and packed it in this box ready to go. So every day through July, things were made to build a journal. So there's a journal in there, there's pockets, pages, snippets, tissue paper, envelopes, everything I need, and even a list of things I could add um, to make sure that I had everything I needed. I've even got the ink down here in this corner. So when I get to Japan, it was canceled due to a cruise um, and Corona. So in that series, I made some of my own little ephemera holders. There's another one and I use fabric on it to um, have just with Japanese, a few little birds, just a few little butterflies, just bits and pieces that sort of suit this theme. Look, I even made a pencil case. Like uh, that, that series, if you got nothing else better to do with your time and you want a little look, it was all based on the Stamperia papers. So have a little look back through my playlist and you'll see the Junk Journal July uh, videos. There's 31 of them. And it made everything I needed to go on a holiday to Japan and create a journal. And that ephemera little box, little packets. Um, yeah, I'm starting to think they're the way to go. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I just want to get some things done. I do want to add some more little tabs of this Czech fabric around the place. So I'm just going to cut where's my fabric scissors I'm just going to cut I really enjoy these projects where I have a theme it sort of keeps me a little bit focused I don't know if you think the same way in your world so I'm just cutting them all roughly the same size And what we might do is I'm going to slide probably three of them into that envelope in the front. So more bits for the owner of the journal to play with. If they want to add some little tab tops onto things. So I might as well do that while I think of it. Now where were we? And I just want to add a tab to the top of this page and because this has a clasp or a fold over I can't do too much in here because it'll all be in the way but I can add elements to the top down here I think I just mentioned that I did a little cluster just to decorate that pocket a little and um, I've now printed out all of the elements that will come back through here. And I went through a few of the kits. So even if I don't use them all on this journal, you can see what is available with my porch prints. Bit of a fan of them. You'll find there's just these couple, couple designers that you'll follow. It's either you like the way they put things together yeah it's it's good okay so now we've got just a couple little tab tops there I could have gone crazy and stitched and added lace bits but you know trying to keep that bulk down and that is just a nice little touch I uh, don't think I'll do anything to the music I might do something here but I might leave it too because you sort of want to give them spots. Uh oh, what have I done? The glue just went through. Now here I want to create one more cluster. I had this leaf lying in here to do something with. So I'm just going to add, add some fabric. Add 
add some bits and pieces to this. I just want a bigger piece of calico, my little pile here. I'm sure there's a scrap. Yeah, there's, there's something. That'll do. There we go. And once again, needle and thread. You don't have to needle and thread, but I enjoy it. So I'm going to just pop a couple little stitches in that cluster. Simple. As you can see, this is just three elements, a bit of a doily, a little feature piece of lace. I'm going to then use one of the garment pins and um, attach the charm and it's another leaf charm from that pack of charms that I got from Amazon. Um, the link to the, I explained all this in previous videos, the link to the Amazon My Favourites list is there. Now I've purchased a few of those items, other, other items on that list I haven't purchased from Amazon and to be honest you can probably get a better price at your local craft store. And at the end of the day, if you can support them before Amazon, go for it. Or you have my blessing. But you can at least see things that I've used and um, sort of recommend. And if you then cut and paste the description of the item into your Google search, and it will bring up other suppliers. And it, you do a bit of a price check. Don't always trust that those big fellows have our best interests. Uh, some beads. Oh, am I game to open those beads again? I'm going to concentrate. I want two, not 20. Lid on. Did it. So, a couple beads. And then the okay and then I'm just going to pin that in the center I know what I was gonna do on that music page I was going to put a paper clip because I want to paper clip there a piece of ephemera from these my porch prints that I printed out. So I'm just going to pop that there. That's what we'll do to this music page and I'll put one here. These are rose gold paper clips. They're really cool. It's an Office Works brand, um, J Burrows, but they're around nice and big. I like the 50 mil paper clip, nice big things. I then add to that paper clip a little bit of fiber and that fiber could potentially stay. Oh gosh, I've got sidetracked again. The fiber could stay on the paper clip or they can take the fiber off and add it to the top of the tag. So it's another great little spot for adding um, bits that they can use. And if they don't ever use them, they still look good. So I just do a little bit of a knot. And that'll hold a half hitch. That'll hold there. No problems. Won't go anywhere. And then I can slide underneath that some pieces of bits and images that they can use to decorate their journal. Which I'll go through shortly. Okay. Okay, so serves the purpose of a few things in the center there, holding bits they can play with. Um, all right, so back to this. What I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to glue down this and it'll be a tuck. So let's do that. Two reasons, because I'm adding uh, this element decorative piece at the top, it's got a bit of weight. And this is only copy paper. Admittedly, once it's been dyed, it's definitely a lot stronger. 
but by gluing that down, we've just reinforced that corner. And now I can add some glue and that piece can go into position at the top there. And I'm not too concerned that it's gonna pull away that piece of calico they potentially could snip at as well. There we go. They can take that pin off. They can use the charm elsewhere. If they want to remove it completely, you know, a bit of a tug and that would go. But I'd say it'll stay there, but they could certainly pinch a little bit off of the calico. Okay, so that's good. That should hold. It's not interfering. It's not too bulky. Let's go. Don't think I'll do anything there. We've got a little flip here, which is good. And then we've got our little bird nest. Lovely. So we've got a little pocket here. So we might slide in a couple more little elements, maybe a postcard. This is part of the My Porch print collection. It's antique postcards. So we could certainly pop a few of them through and it's lightweight. I won't stitch around it. Sometimes I do. But um, you've got to be a bit, little bit careful with stitching because at the moment that looks quite, you know, what's the word? Not luxurious, large. If I was to put a border of stitching around there, it brings the image in visually, so it can make a piece of ephemera look a little small. So I might tuck two postcards in there, can't hurt. And we'll leave them unembellished so they can have a play with them. So how are we going? All right, so now we've got this page. What are we gonna do here? Maybe we do another flip that has calico on it. Maybe we... We need something to pop a colour, I think. Let's have a look. So I want to create another one of those. But maybe there's a Roxy Creations. Oh, here's an envelope that I've created previously. Maybe we pop that in. That's something new. That's just using one of um, the business envelopes. Now, it's not tea dyed like I did do a heap. It's pre-decorated, it will fit, it has a piece of ephemera in it ready to go, it just needs to have its corners rounded. Oh, I love it when there's something ready. Goodness me, could do with some element on top there. I might just use a little bit of this zigzag calico. It does interfere with my butterfly. Maybe I've got to put it like that. And that looks dinky. Too small. Um, okay, let's get a bit of the check fabric again. And let's just cut another little tag. Keep it all similar. Oh, I know. What about we lay that on there? Like that. That little scrap's been rolling around. Now this is quite heavy duty. So I've glued the image onto some book page, to standard book page. Then I put paper on the back, which has made it quite heavy. You don't have to do that you could certainly use uh, just the copy paper yeah i like that little element there um especially if you've got you know a little bit of weight happening on your journal and you want to just lighten the pages a little bit so let's say you're using a lot of antique pages the last thing you need is heavy pockets and tucks and things on your journal because it just starts tearing the pages down, especially if someone's going to use the book regularly, like every day, pick it up. Oh, I put the glue on the wrong side. Goodness me. 
that will dry clear and won't be noticed. So I'm not too worried about it. And I need a bit of glue in there as well. See, this is what happens where you're talking and creating at the same time. That's okay. So there's our little journal card just embellished a little bit. Everything's decorated nicely. I just need to ink it a little. It just looks a little bit new. Put the lid on my glue. Move it out of the way before I knock it with my hand and everything goes flying. So I'm just going to age it a little and I'm just going to age this corner because it could potentially be seen. Oh, you've got to love pre-made pieces. Just to collage that envelope with all those bits is um, hours of work. But if you want a, a job that's just, you know, you don't have to think too much, these are great to do. And just pop them in a box and they're ready to go. So my little tab does have this piece here so we can get rid of that it's going to go there it will fit it swings the right way so I'm just going to put some glue all the way around that edge I might just cut that angle there too it's not needed and then Place that there. I'm just going to go this side of my stitch line. In goes my pocket. And I think I just mentioned that that is part of the My Porch Prints ephemera. So that'll work. That should appear when we do a bit of a flip through of what that company has to offer. So now we have this to cover. So what could we use? Let's get a bit of Shakespeare happening. When in doubt, bring out Shakespeare. Okay, so I might just, I'm going to use this edge. So I'm just going to tear him down a little bit more. might bring in some more colors where's my glue book gone put the pin in the glue oh I feel like a hot mess today I don't know I think I'm excited about doing this I haven't um, decorated a journal like this for probably three whoops three or four months so I feel like I really feel like I'm having fun because I've been so enthralled in my stitching that I'm loving the fact that I'm playing again but it has made me realize just how much time goes into these journals and if you're making them all the time to sell my hat goes off to you because it is so much work so I'm just lifting that up a little bit past past that envelope tab it's still visible down here at the bottom. So I'm going to have a look for something that can go there. Let's have a little look through our box of tricks here. I'm thinking a label. Maybe a... So I need something long. Maybe I could do something tall. Same colour. Gosh, it's good having all this pre-done. They're like stamps. What's this blue one? Like it would work, but I'm enjoying looking. What's Rachel call it? Auditioning. And there's that bandit. Between the last video and this one, I hopped up and let them out of their 
Oh, I like that one. Let them out of their um, bed area. And they've got like a caged area. And oh my goodness, I walked around the corner of the house. They're sort of... Behind me is our patio. And beside me, window to outside. So I often see them playing in the grass. And that way is a second smaller patio off of our bedroom that... Um, they uh, sleep in for the night so I've just put in um, hang on I'm looking for my pinking shears that create the ribble effect I don't know if they'll work because they're cheap oh yeah sometimes they don't that helps you make that stamp look it was like a box of them in a cheap shop half of them didn't chop this one barely chops I think I've thrown most of them away because I think you can cut alfoil with it and that will sharpen. I just haven't had a chance to. Yeah, I like that. I feel like I need something else. What else do I need? Cheesecloth. So, yeah, as I was saying, I've walked around the side here to their bedroom. I've come around the corner to give them their breakfast and let them out for the day well all i'll say is a bomb has gone off in there there is foam bits everywhere so the little buggers i know i was a little late in letting them out the sun was up and they certainly like to be up and about with the sun here comes fudge now it's just a circus here so they've obviously got a little bit antsy, we'll say, and decided to destroy. Where's my piece of cheesecloth get to? Destroy one of their mattresses. Now the mattress is in a foam, uh, in a hessian um, encasement, you know, stitched over the top. So these pair of monkeys. And I know who it'll be. It won't be Pepper. She's old enough to know. Well, she doesn't know better, but she's old enough not to do that. But Mr. Bandit, the pup, I think he was involved to some large degree. Just seems like his MO at the moment, chewing everything. He's got his teeth coming through, so he's chewing everything. Okay, I don't like how that writing is just there so i'm actually going to tear a little bit more off and do a second little piece that's a little bit more substantial and i might just lift that corner up and tuck it in under yeah just feel like it needs something else there to um, be added it's like I've just missed the text. I realised it as I was tearing it that it sort of just didn't look quite right. So I'm just going to slide this in as well. The little line can stay. But I just feel like I need something. And I wonder if I've got a word that goes down. Excuse me, just reaching through. I'm pretty sure I do in one of these. I've got words that go... What's the word? Opposite to horizontal. Vertical. It'd have to be something. Yeah, some of these. That might work. Yeah, that'll do. It's technically not going down, but it's elongated enough to look like it could be, if that makes sense. So back to Bandit, because he just went woof and it reminded me he's in the bad books. I um, come back inside thinking, oh, there's another job for the day. Go and tidy up the foam. And I got a text from a friend who said, are there any more funny videos of Bandit? And Pepper, she's got a puppy dog herself and she loves it when I film something and send her the latest on their 
antics. And I said, it just so happens there will be some footage coming later today because they have been up to no good. So she was giggling. I'm just going to try and slide that in there too. Yep. And I was thinking, I've got so many little videos of those pair and what they're doing. They're not the best filming quality because I'm often roaming and filming at the same time. So they probably will make people seasick. But I'm thinking of doing some bonus videos and um, adding them to my channel in a playlist. And the, the other reason that this has come to mind is my phone is filling up with videos. My iPad's filling up with videos. I'm having to upgrade my storage in the cloud for videos. And a good chunk of them are actually pet videos that you just don't want to delete because they'll be gone, gone forever. So I'm thinking of doing a Pepper Bandit shenanigans playlist so that at least I can get them into the YouTube world and YouTube can store them for me. So that's what I'm thinking. So that's pretty good back there. I'm happy with all that. There might be some more bits and pieces go in, but that's pretty good. Now, while I think of it, I sort of need something here because it's upside down text. Have I got something that can just stick straight on? It also has to be horizontal. Maybe I could just do a frame. I think these are Rachel frames. They may not be. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Just a little bit blendy blendy. But I don't mind. Nope. Let's just pull one more out. I know there's two pockets that need something. I'm going to use those two and I will add a little bit of ink to the white section just to knock them back. I'm pretty sure these are Rachel or oh, maybe they're maybe they're Tracy. Isn't it hard to keep track of it all? Isn't it fun when they release new kits? Clicky clicky. And that's the sound of coins. But that's all good. I don't mind supporting them. We just mustn't forget about our, our craft stores. You know, the ones that sell our fabrics and scrapbook supplies. Where we can have a road trip, go and visit the girls in those stores. Because it's not easy out there in the big bad world. Yeah, I'm just going to glue that there. Might just use a bit of art glitter glue. So this journal, I think, is starting to come together now completed. Really loving how this is looking now. So let's find the other pocket of the Shakespeare paper. There it is. And let's pop... I might just trim that frame down a fraction. Don't think I need all of that border. This page needs something, doesn't it? What are we going to do here? Maybe something in the ephemera that I'm going to show you is can be used there. I think that was my thoughts yesterday's video, which was like 20 minutes ago. So that's just disguised the fact that that writing is upside down. So I'm happier with that. Okay, let's have a little flip through because I think we're at the stage where it's just a sprinkling of... Um, pieces for the journal owner to actually it's got a little 
bulky with those beads, but that's okay. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, so probably pop something else into those two envelopes. Uh, definitely something there. I'll do something here. I might, I'm going to. I'm going to, am I going to glue that down? I like the fact that it flips out. I'll, I'll leave it for a moment. Because it shows them that they can fold a page to make it fit. So I'm not worried about that. A little charm. Bit of a blank page for them to play. It's oh, it's hard to hold yourself back. I'll pop in a bit more ephemera here, ephemera there. So the centre of this journal is going to be full of goodies for them to play with. And we've got some fabric in the envelope for them to play with. We have a tuck here. I guess by having that tuck there shows them that if they want, they can make that a tuck. So there's a decision made. Try to make, well, this is my theory. I don't know if you agree at all. Try and make your journal. Show them what to do with journaling. Because what I found when I gift these journals to people is I also just mentioned some YouTube channels that they could go and watch that may inspire them. And I try and pick different things. Like I'd go to Meg's journals, who's very collage built. She'll pick a page and build a, a, an image and a story on a theme. So that helps them with journaling. Then I'll show them someone like Rachel who gathers paper, all sorts, and builds something, which is this type of thing. So they would see her channel and go, ah, oh, that's in my journal. Then I show them someone like Artie Mays, Andrea, who then uses inks and paints and splatters and oh goodness so much stuff to build her own background so if you don't have access to a computer and you can't buy pre um pre-made images and things like that andrea will show you how to make it and make it look old and make it look vintage so she is fantastic for watching for those types of things so yeah my journals are about helping people join our industry i guess does that make sense i'm just going to cut another tab for this rachel journal at the front here rachel journal card and i think by adding things like this it also shows them that they could create their very own collage journal cards too so that's what my journaling creation ethos is. I don't know, is ethos the right word? It's about giving people a snippet of our world. We're the creators. I'm not a journaler, but if I was to be given a journal and I'd never done it before and I had no idea where to start, to have a journal that encourages my learning along the way is where I think I'd want to be. I feel like I need something on the front there. I'm going to put a garnet pin there and attach another charm. I might put another key on. And it too could be removed because it's just swinging. Does that make sense? That's where I come from with journal making. It's more about dragging them into our world. I, I, actually, I won't use a charm because I've just spotted out of the corner of my eye some of those itty bitty little, um, put the lid on. Some of these little itty bitty bits that come out of when you cut up See these? You cut up those doilies and these little elements join together um, these doilies. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to create a dangle with some of these bits on, which they can then unpin so they're not stitched, they're just bits. So that now gives them, and I'm hoping I can attach it to this tab. Okay, so there's a little dangle of just some little elements. Now, if I was doing a journal with a hard spine, I would have one of those Tim Holtz brads going through that spine, and this is them, um, ring fasteners. So it's like a brad with a ring, and it would go into the spine in the process of constructing the spine and covering the spine and lacing it, and they would be sort of hidden in here and then the ring. And on that ring, I would hang um, some of the eyelash yarn, some bits like this, and it can be used to even just some calico, just to be snipped at to, you know, embellish their journal. So that's where we're at with the journal. Now it's a case of um, adding some of the pieces to sort of fill it up, the bunnies, the birds. So I'm just knotting that off, just sort of seeing how thick it is. It's still good. It's still, there's plenty of room there. And I haven't even fastened that to any great degree. So that's good. There's still plenty of space in that for them to play. And I want to add some more. So I think that is finished for embellishing. Now what I do want to show you is the world of my porch prints, if you're not familiar with it. So let me just clear the little journal out of the way. I'll come back to that in another video where we sprinkle bits and pieces through it. And these bits and pieces here will need to be prepped, which I won't do on camera. Maybe it's time to invite Mary Ann over and get her gluing and cutting. <laughs> time to offer a roast dinner for some friends who can come and, oh, there's some beads. There's still beads hanging around. Look, there's another three. All right, goodness me. Pick them up. I bet there's more. They will keep appearing, just when you thought you had them all found. Okay, let's put that out of the way. Snip it over there. Okay, my porch prints. So this is Birds of a Feather. Um, I only printed the two pages because everything was really themed around this type of artwork and it didn't quite fit with what I'm doing. But I thought I'll show it to you anyway, and you never know, it might fit one of the other journals, especially the one that has a bit of pink. This one here is more the journal we're working on. The only thing I'll say, it's got a French theme to it, and we're doing Edith. But Edith went on a holiday to France and gathered some of these things and popped them in her journal. Okay, we're going to buy that story. Looks like she went to Brooklyn in New York too. Gee, she got around. I'm sure she didn't, but... It's going in. So that is the bird one. Now this one is called Daisy. It has a real tone of yellow through it and I sort of like it because sometimes yellow can lift a moody journal. It sort of pops a little bit of light into um, things. It's the same with needlework. Yellow is often the color you need to sort of lift a floral treatment you're doing. So I really like, it's not really the era, but mm, sort of is. We can't really see what her dress looks like. So yeah, it could work. So this is the Daisy. Gorgeous. The Daisy one. Lots and lots of pieces. In my Porch Prince gear, you will find little envelope books, uh, books you can make up. So that's like a little book cover. Could have some papers stitched into it. Um, and then you can just slide them into journals. So I'll probably make those up as well and just put them in my little box. Whether they go into these journals, who knows, doesn't matter, they're done. So this is like nearly a project just to prep. This is more Daisy and some words. I had someone um, request a journal a few years ago and the theme was sunflowers. 
It was a memory journal and the son, an adult son had passed tragically and the family wanted to gift the mum a journal and they said to me, can you sprinkle sunflowers through, but only a few, like don't fill it up with sunflowers, just a hint. So this is how this kit came to be because throughout this was the odd piece with a sunflower on. So I kept it very neutral, very, you know, elegant. But every so often she'd open an envelope or pull out a journal card and here was a sunflower. I'm, get, I'm feeling emotional. That was a beautiful journal when it was finished. See how there's just a hint of a sunflower? There's that um, beehive where she's used it now in a journal card. So, sunflower. Sunflower. So that's the daisy kit. Look at that. Gorgeous elements. Even if you just stuff them into, look at the sunflowers. Stuff them into sunflowers. I'm going to start crying if I continue on that path. Stuff them into envelopes, these little bits and pieces. Now, this is the butterfly um, kit. So, printed all of it because it is just gorgeous. Now, I think we were just putting a tab on a, a journal card that I believe we will see in amongst these pages. Aren't they beautiful? I like how there's a little just black and neutral here, but then there's some random color as well popping up. Sunflower, some fussy cut. Just beautiful, some stamps. And then um, this is a great big one that you can slide in. We'll have a pocket in that journal. We could use that and that. So I like how she's put some bigger elements in it. Now this is French rabbits. Technically it's Edith and technically we probably shouldn't be using them, but they're just so cute. So we probably will slide the odd rabbit in. So that's a little bit um, a certain style. It's probably not our style, but these ones here are better and this page that's a little booklet that can be created in the rabbits those little booklets are in your file on all of the themes I just didn't print them all there's bird ones there's she's got an antique papers and scripts so it's very generic you can print that and then embellish it with whatever theme you're working on she does big tags these are great these are also joined visually on the paper so you could separate it or make a booklet tag out of it so it gives you a few options and then just lots of little pocket stuffing things in the rabbit so like I'm saying I've got three or four kits here and all of the kits have a similar structure to them so this page will appear in the other ones but themed to flowers or birds or whatever look at those they're very much Edith very very much Edith so they'll definitely be involved just gorgeous little belly band that's very Edith and then this one is Owl and Roses it's another little kit of hers and once again big tickets for a booklet you could even cut that top edge off like so and um, just make a, a little journal and there's two pages in that. I actually printed double copies of it because they will drift through nicely. Okay, so that's my porch prints. As you can see, it's the gift that keeps giving. And if there's anything there that she doesn't have, like she even does Peter Rabbit. I think there's Beatrix Potter. There's all sorts. It's, yeah, fantastic. The link is in the description below. Okay, everyone, I will leave you in peace. I will go and prep these. My prep will be, actually, I might just show you what I'll do in prepping these. So the first thing I do is I get rid of excess white paper. So I trim it down. I just take a quarter of an inch off if needed for a smidgen or a good chunk on the bottom. So what that does is two things, saves glue. You may say it's not much, but... It does add up. I then grab my coffee paper, coffee stained or my stained paper. And now 
I can lie that on there and see, I can see my border. So the next thing I do is I go around the perimeter of my paper twice with my glue stick, being sure to get a really good covering because that's the point of which if anything's gonna separate, it will. I then come through the center of my page. Now this is come to me from mass production. You've got to work out simple ways that save you time and also your wrist, because I'm applying a lot of pressure here and doing a hundred of these soon sort of gets pressure on your wrist. Now my finger is going to the bottom corner I'm also going to the top opposite corner. So that now gives me control over this page. I can flip it. And because I trim that white off, I can clearly see where my paper needs to sit. And my area doesn't get wet. I then pick up my, um, oh, what is this called? My thingy that applies pressure and ensure that that is gripping. The glue is finding the fibers of the paper underneath. The next thing I do is I trim it back to the artwork. So this is the second trim back. It can be right back to the piece itself. So for example, I could come into that journal card. Now you've got to do this all in one one phase don't do a heap of gluing and then come back to it because the reason I'm doing this in the process of trimming I am forcing that paper together by cutting it so now that edge is really glued really glued then I flip it over and I need to run my thingamajigger over this side as well because we've added moisture to one side and it's pulling this way we've then got to come to the other side and make sure that moisture comes through to this side a little bit I can feel it's quite cold now it's pulling the paper in the opposite direction so in the process the paper was going this way now it's going this way and by molding it together it will come straight. So the next step is I put it under my workstation. So you can see I'm lifting my pad here and it is sitting underneath this, okay? That is the trick to getting really well adhered backing papers to journal cards. I'll do another one for you. So first step, trim off the excess white paper even if it's only a smidgen it doesn't matter because it reduces the size of your area to be glued and then you can glue directly so you could sit one night and trim all of these off so they're ready to go that'd be one mass production thing and like I said, roast dinner, get someone over, get them snipping. Just say, turn it over. So now my mess is contained on my paper with my glue stick around the perimeter. Very important. If I go past the edge of my printed page, doesn't matter because the glue is going to be just on the paper below. So I've now got my perimeter sorted. And I can now just go up and down, up and down. And it must be thick, not that thick. Just pick that back up. Spread that out. But at least full coverage. Whoops. Okay. Now, once I said before, finger in the bottom corner finger in the top that gives you control flip it lay it down working from the center out grab your tool give it a good 
you can flip it and do the back but I then tend to pick up my scissors and do another rough cut and like I said this is forcing the papers together on that edge that I'm cutting That's the process we're using, burnishing tool. So that's pulling those fibres of that paper back into position so that they're not fighting in one direction. They're now sort of working together. You could start breaking that down a little bit more, but I tend not to. I tend to just let it in its entirety Oops. So slide under the mat in there and I just let it sit for a few hours and carry on. I'll do another one. How are we going for time? 56 minutes. We can do another one. Two pieces of paper here. So once you get a system going, you know, it can go pretty quick. And if you do a bit of trimming in front of the TV, you could glue onto book page and then back your paper you could but it will turn it into quite a firm piece of ephemera i think that's enough and that will never come apart doing it this way it took me ages to figure this out because i was finding that i'd get these little air bubbles and once you get an air bubble in there where it hasn't glued um, it will separate over time. The more hands touch touch it, the more it will potentially break down. And I found this was the most methodical way to do it. You've got to think a little bit about processes that make things simple for you. And a methodical. I know this is boring and this is like prep work but when it comes to building a journal especially if you're commercially doing it so my fingers are on those edges whoops 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 so it can go pear-shaped but it's a save burnish now nearly picked up my fabric scissors no 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 now I'm going to trim back as close as I can get. Look at that house image. I wonder if that's a famous painting. So pretty. Okay, coming along this last side. Give it another burnish just to get the fibers all nice and flat and any air pockets are just starting to maybe appear because you've been handling it you've sorted them out and now it's a case of lift my mat and slide it underneath okay that's it so that's my tip to gluing papers to the back of printed ephemera that you're going to slide into pockets from there you can embellish decorate etc etc okay everyone i will leave you in peace and i will see you in the next video hopefully all of these are glued snipped organized and ready to pop through my journal and then i can start decorating the next one okay see you all then bye